Hello everyone, this is CM Kozman again and today I want to talk to you about the possibility of recreating dinosaurs by tweaking with the genes of chickens. Now, I was prompted to this idea by this article I read last month about the famous controversial paleontologist Jack Horner as he gave a, a TED talk about creating a, a chickenosaurus by basically manipulating the genes of chickens selectively and getting getting the right switches on for teeth, claws, tails, so on and so forth until he somehow could produce a dinosaur. We can make a chicken with teeth. Now for those of you who don't know much about the issue, dinosaurs are very closely related to birds and Jack Horner's idea is that we could somehow get the basic bird genome from a, a chicken and mess with its genes left and right until we switch on the right genes that give us a sort of dinosaur look-alike uh, retarded monstrosity. Now, his grounding for the topic is that uh, there have been incidences, one with the University of Chicago recently, uh, where uh, chicken embryos did develop teeth and they look something like this. Now, it may not be clear to you now, but this is the beak, highly magnified, and this is the tip of the beak, of course, this is a skeleton, and right here you see a tiny protrusion, and here, a tiny knob, and these are supposed to be the recreated teeth in a chicken. Now, Horner says which, uh, Horner just makes so much of a media issue about this, he gives out this sort of, uh, charming geek TED talk and the headlines say things like 20 years after Jurassic Park uh, a dinosaur chicken hybrid could soon exist and you know there have been cases where mutations did produce some really strange looking uh, chicken weird uh, dinosaur like things now mostly these things are happening with chicken not because chickens have a predisposition to become dinosaurian, but because they are the most widely cultivated bird on earth today. I'm gonna give you a case study from way, way back in 1878. Now, it's in this book called Incredible Life, a Handbook of Biological Mysteries by William Corliss. This book is like the necronomicon of biological weirdness. It's very rare. Its front cover has this picture of a parasite wasp just so that you can see and the back cover has a picture of a flying squid and basically what this guy did was he collected the last 150 years of biological literature and he gave a, a textbook of only the weirdest cases and not surprisingly under the bird section we have the picture of a chicken born with mammalian head features uh, no, a fowl with mammalian head features. Now, surprisingly, this looks like one of the dinosaurs we've been reconstructing with feathers. And, you know, it's no coincidence that, you know, a lucky mutant in 1878. And I'll read something from this story, too. It says, A fowl has been exhibited alive at the New York Aquarium and Professor F. R. Strangel of Columbia College vouches for its authenticity. It may be presumed to be a genuine specimen and it says uh, something like both lips and nose are formed by a moderately hard cartilaginous substance having a smooth surface the nostrils being very similar to those observed in many species of monkeys now this is obviously very strange but even this note about uh, the facial integument of the mouth must give us some ideas about how to reconstruct extinct dinosaurs. So basically this weird uh, chicken without a beak had a, instead of teeth or a beak, a hard gummy substance covering its lips. Now this is a side issue of course, uh, connecting to the whole debate about what did the faces of dinosaurs look like. And it's very interesting that these guys back in 1878 with little hints of dinosaur bird relationships they thought it looked like the face of a mammal and a monkey but going back to the main issue how feasible or how logical is it to really recreate dinosaurs by messing around with chickens now jack horner says that this will 
create a media interest and it will promote people to the study of dinosaurs it will the resulting chickenosaurus will be a sort of grand attractor to the science of paleontology you know first of all i believe jack horner he's been somehow okay he's an eminent scientist but I have to criticize that every research this guy does is based on sensation, at least for the last 5-10 years, whatever. Recently, uh, just before this one, he came out with this, uh, exactly, he said that maybe closely related dinosaurs, this is Triceratops, this is Torosaurus, they were the juvenile and adult morphs of each other. And you know, this is conveyed with the most blatant, uh, like, Triceratops controversy shakes paleontology to its bones. Come on, man! I mean, what happens here is that uh, Jack Horner's ideas has be, have been all about sensation and they're scientifically plausible, the science certainly isn't wrong, but it's science geared to the maximum media attraction and not to the maximum utility or maximum veracity or maximum logic. So what will you do? You have millions of chicken embryos, you'll do thousands of experiments on them and you'll create, you know, retard upon retard. I'm using this term informally, but you'll have this, I mean, imagine how much animal exploitation uh, gets you angry, you know, like forget animal experiments, animal uh, like farms and whatever. Imagine how much these make you angry. And now imagine a series of these experiments being conducted uh, just for the sake of creating one weird retarded mutant that looks most like our concept of a 90s dinosaur and in the way you will have thousands of deformed embryos, millions of research money spent and you know it really wouldn't, uh, how do you say, it would really wouldn't be a satisfying experiment in my opinion and supposing that you did get this right and you did get a chickenosaurus What's this creature gonna do? Animals and plants cannot be held independently from their ecosystems. You will have a, a proverbial white elephant. The white elephant was a term used in the 19th century for an outrageously expansive and pointless object that you must somehow ma maintain. And this Chickenosaurus, if it existed, it would be the perfect white elephant. It would just stay there. It's not connected to any living ecosystem, you cannot expect it to survive on its own. You know, how, if at all, would it reproduce? It would just get... It would just consume food and sit there in the corner of some zoo, like some sorry or little... It would look like this thing. Have you read... Have you watched Alien 4, the movie? Now I will show it to you. Wait, if I can find it. Alien Resurrection. Did you watch this film? I have the production book right here and in one scene they have all these failed clones of Ripley that were produced in order to get the in order to get the alien embryo from her because of some stupid Hollywood science logic but basically we had scenes like this you know with weird malformed embryos and one of them is barely alive and he says in a very very famous scene from movie history actually kill me you know, this dinosaur chicken shit would be just like that, you know, it would be begging for you, kill me, kill me, of course it wouldn't say that, but it would be just one sorry ass mutant, and it would be one sorry ass waste of money, just done so that some sort of guy can get his sensationalist drugs off. Now, Jack Horner, if you're watching this, I don't mean to insult you, but you're doing something very wrong. And obviously, you know it's not gonna be possible. No one's gonna throw out money to this. It's just good news, good publicity. Funnily enough, even today we have birds that look like dinosaur roy, chickenoid things. For example, the juveniles of this bird, the common Huatzin, are born with little claws. And here you can see a video of one of them trying to flap about and doing its bitty bitty things. And you know, you don't need to replicate chickens or like, I don't know, mess with anything's genes, you know. You can just look at nature itself in its present day, you know. Imagine this Chickenosaurus project is gonna cost you what? Like, just ballpark estimate. 
X million dollars. Why not use those X million dollars to help preserve like this exciting strange birds that we have? You know, create an exhibit of birds or like weird dinosaur like birds that we still have today alive and are endangered. Or why don't you give it to a museum? Many museums are struggling for cash in these depression stricken days. One of the museums even recently cut its uh, research funding. Why not give it to that? I'm sure if you gave that money to some competent paleontologists or paleontology artists, hint hint, like me, John Conway, Darren Nash, we would come up with a far better, a grand attractor for uh, dinosaur science or like evolutionary science than your weird ass alien for kill me chicken. So that's my idea, you know? Don't go cloning around chickens, just invest your money on what's alive and exciting today and you know, don't be such a media playboy. Best wishes and goodbye to you all. When our dino chicken hatches, it will be obviously the poster child or what you might call a poster chick for technology, entertainment, and design.